Hi, this is Aaron here. Um, so I was asked to do a quick video on how to use Cyril. Um, so Cyril is a free application that you can use for astrophotography for your images. Um, and it provides great results like for, for being a free application. There are, uh, there are other applications that you can then upgrade from from this that you'd have to pay for that are that are expensive but if you're only getting into it this is a, a great starting point so there's two different ways that you can do this you can either stack your images outside of Cyril and then bring in the stacked image or you can stack your images in Cyril uh, which I prefer to stack them outside of it myself so so I used deep sky stacker uh, to create a, a file a fits file and it's basically that you just throw your images into deep sky stacker register them stack them and then it, it basically compiles all your images into one and gives you a, a final file that you can use in here so if you're not familiar with that you'll find videos on youtube for for stacking the image in, in deep sky stacker if you have any questions drop me a message um so anyway I've, I've already got the file ready to go so i'm gonna go file open Okay, this is the file here, so. So you can see when I open it up, Cyril opens up two windows. So the window on the left is your RGB image and the window on the right is all of your separate channels, the, the red, uh, green and blue channel. So uh, if I was to open the, the TIFF file or the FITS file that you can see there, this is exactly how it looks, so it's gonna be dark you won't see much in the image after it's been stacked uh, and this is quite normal so uh, this is because it's it's currently linear um, which basically it's the raw data coming out of the image stack but what you can do if you want to see roughly what you have in your image uh, you can come down to the bottom here where it says linear click the drop down list and um, go down to auto stretch and just give that a second so this is what our auto stretched image looks like this is uh, you can see there's a lot of color issues in here and and, and it, it needs to be corrected so the red channel doesn't look great green channel is dark and then the blue channel blue channel looks roughly okay it's you can see the galaxy starting to pop out there so the first thing that we'll do is try and get the color correct and the image balance the colors and then proceed from there so so when we initially open it up, you, you would have got this uh, control center, which is where you do all your processing from. And most of the processing that you'll do is from this image processing menu. So I'm just gonna select that. Um, and we kind of work from, your, from the top down. We won't touch the force two yet. So we'll start with color calibration. So you go to color calibration, color calibration, and then you you have to get a background reference point which is your dark point and then you have to get a white reference point which is usually your galaxy or, or something that's going to be a white reference so we'll start with the top one the, the the background reference and i'm just going to find a dark part of the sky where there isn't really any stars and just drag a square over it and then i'm going to come back over here and say use selection and then that puts in the selected area that you're going to work from and i'm just going to click background neutralization and you can see that's changed the image so if i just actually flick back to the rgb image here you can see uh, the difference that it's made so already you're seeing the galaxy popping out and we've we've hardly done anything really to the image yet so i'm just going to go to the next part now which is the the white reference so again i'm just going to drag uh, a square over the white point in the image so i'm going to go for the the core of the galaxy and then use current selection that puts in the the selected area uh, on the screen and then just click apply and again now that's after adjusting our white point so so that should be the the image now balanced so i'm going to come out of the color calibration section i'm going to move this over and then you can see here look at the difference in the galaxy so a few steps we've already got a great image starting to come out here 
Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to image processing, uh, remove green noise. So sometimes when you when you do astrophotography and you stack images, it, it puts this kind of green noise into the images. Sometimes it's kind of uh, frustrating to try and get rid of, but this tool here kind of flattens it down a little bit. So uh, you just leave all of the defaults in place and click apply. And it just kind of makes subtle adjustments to the image. That's it there now. So I'm just going to click close. And then just go back to the control center again. And so the next thing that we'd probably want to do there's a lot of stuff you can do there's other tools in here deconvolution kind of pulls out lines in the galaxy etc i just want to kind of get it from start to finish very rough and then you can learn about these other bits yourselves afterwards but uh, the next thing that i would do is probably crop the image to get rid of these kind of nasty lines that are on the outside so <clears throat> so i'll just show you here what i mean so from from stacking the image you'll see that around the outsides of the image, you have this kind of black line around it. So that's from where each image has been overlaid and, and you get kind of a, a torn line around the outside. So, so what you want to do here is just go back to this one here where you have your channels and you want to just drag a square over your image that you want to crop. So I'm gonna take roughly that. Again, this is just very quick, just for processing. So once you have that selected, you right click on it and you choose crop. And then that, that gives you a nice clean image now for processing. Um, so we're going to change it now from auto stretch. If you change it back to linear. <coughs> and if you were to save your image now, this is what, what it would look like. So it still doesn't look very nice. This is with, without it being stretched. Uh, so the next step is to officially stretch the image. So this this commits it then to the to the file. So uh, if we just go back to the control center, uh, go to image processing, and then go to histogram transformation, <coughs> and the same as pixel size, so you have this button here, which is the nuclear button, which basically stretches the image for you. So I don't know how true it is, but I heard that the guy who developed the auto stretch uh, functionality for Pixen site also developed the same stretching functionality for Cyril. So you're getting it for free. Um, so if you click the auto stretch option, and basically what it does is it takes the histogram and stretches the, 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 the histogram as best it can without clipping any image or clipping any data on either side of it so so that's it done um, so click apply and that's it applied to the to the image and then close the histogram so if we were to save the file now this is what it will look like which uh, is definitely better than than how we started so uh, so what we can still do better so what we're going to do is um, do a background extraction which kind of removes some of this noise and, 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 and light pollution that you're seeing in the image so if I go to image processing and go to background extraction and uh, usually I think the default to this is 4 and 15 or something to that effect but usually 4 and 14 for me anyway seems to do the job so uh, if you just set it to 4 and 14 click generate and it basically puts um, these kind of green sample squares on your image. And basically what these are doing is taking a sample from the whole image uh, to then decide what needs to be extracted uh, as being uh, the background. So it's, it's uh, recommended that you remove any of these green squares from your galaxy or nebula or whatever you have in the image so i'm just going to fly around and take the ones that are in the immediate vicinity of the of the galaxy just to to make sure they don't interfere uh, again this is kind of very rough i'm just uh i'm just going to do a, a, a few of them and, and 
process it just to show you how it works but um usually what what people do as well is you spend a lot of time going through this making sure that there aren't any uh green squares on on top of stars because if they are then it messes up the extraction because it messes up the reference so that kind of looks okay uh, i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it um so once you've done that now you just click uh, apply And it basically subtracts out uh, that kind of white from the image and it, or any gradients and it kind of balances it out. So you can see now we have a balanced image. It looks kind of uniform across the image if you're looking at it, there's no gradients there. So we click close and this is our image. So you can see we still have kind of, it's fairly bright so we could probably do a bit better with darkening in the background. So next thing that we'll do is go to image processing and we're going to go to a sign transformation and then we'll just adjust this black point up we'll start at the top actually just see what it looks like if it's too dark we can drop it down actually that kind of looks okay so we're going to leave that there we're going to click apply um, and that's that's basically it so i don't think there's anything else i want to go through there for the moment so background extraction so so that's that's more or less it so that that kind of gives you a rough image you can then take that out to um any application that you use for processing personally i i i use lightroom a lot i also use photoshop but mainly lightroom so so what you would do then is so in the control center then you just go to file save as and then if you want to use it in photoshop or lightroom you change it from fits to tiff and then if you go into the process directory then you can or go into any directory that you want to save it in i'm just going to call this export and click save and then it'll ask you for the bit rate for the file which you can see if 16 bit is standard for for uh, photoshop and lightroom etc and uh, no compression click save and that's it so so once you have your file out then you can pull this into lightroom you can boost your 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 colors and your your highlights and stuff and, and kind of make the image really pop so yeah if you have any questions please feel free to to contact me but uh yeah it's very kind of rough kind of introduction to to cyril yeah okay all the best